Okay, welcome everybody to this uh, session, this project's orientation session on the research impact and outcomes for the National Data Assets Projects. Uh, so our director, Adrian Burton, who's the Director of Data Policy and Services, is going to take you through um, our requirements around research impact um, and how you can uh, develop those in your projects. And after that, um, after his presentation, we'll have uh, time for questions and discussion, but not a lot of it because we're going to finish on the half hour. So next slide, please, Adrian. Just want to acknowledge and celebrate the first Australians on whose traditional lands we meet and pay our respects to elders past and present. I'm in Brisbane, so it's the Turbal and Yagara peoples um, I'm acknowledging there. So I will hand over to you, Adrian. We can't hear you. I think you're muted, Adrian. Oh, we lost him. No, no we still can't. Him. I couldn't unmute whilst I was sharing. Not ah, right. Not a, accustomed to the WebEx interface. <laughs> we're back again. Yes. Great. Well, uh, welcome everyone. Uh, we're talking to you about ostensibly the specific thing we're talking to you about is a kind of policy and guideline that we have within the National Data Assets Program. It's on research outcomes broadly. Uh, we'll start to use those words in a bit more of a defined way uh, as we go through here. Um, but it's a it's a guideline that says that we're looking for uh, the infrastructure to have uh, actual research outcomes and broader impacts in the society and that we're together we will plan how to do that and together we'll plan and monitor those things and be able to, to report on them afterwards. That's the, the specific uh, thing we're here to talk about. I'll probably today we will actually go back to uh, just defining a bit more carefully what we're talking about when we say an outcome or an impact and why that why we might be interested in those things and then we'll talk about the planning and monitoring and reporting as far as this program is concerned. Uh, Natasha said that we we think it would be a, a shorter presentation here. We, you know, there is a longer time if you need to ask further questions. We won't sort of cut it off necessarily, but um, this is meant to be a kickoff as, uh, and um, an invitation to help us to, you know, design these, uh, the application of these guidelines uh, better, but that work will happen further down the track. All right. Uh, most of you will know we're an NCRIS program and uh, NCRIS is reviewed by the uh, Australian government every few years. And the last time it was reviewed, there was an infrastructure roadmap uh, published and one of the um, key things in that roadmap um, said that Australia's research infrastructure should support, support Australia's future. And you'll see here over on the left, you've got the research infrastructure in the middle and it's giving benefits to Australia's research institutions and world-class universities as well as to industry. And then there's a, an arrow going out to the right with this idea that that's not the, that's not the end of it. You know, just uh, universities using the infrastructure or in, even industry using the infrastructure is not the end point. The end point as far as success for the, for the NCRIS program is that there are uh, some impacts, you know, in Australia's future food security or health or they're just exam example ones there. So that's the reason why we have this guideline and policy within our program, because we're inheriting it from the uh, federal government program. Uh, we have a, a, a program logic for the for the whole national data assets program that, that is a pretty standard uh, program logic. It starts with the inputs and uh, we're kind of past that stage where we've been able to secure time, resources, investment, people, pre-existing data and all sorts of things from the ARDC and our partners and they are the inputs to uh, different projects within this program. 
the next stage we'll we'll be we'll we'll head off and we've got our project plans and we're going to do a certain number of activities there'll be work packages there'll be activities in general uh, to, to sort of simplify what's happening across all the projects in all the programs the activity is to build a data infrastructure obviously building a data infrastructure is a much more complex thing than just just building a road uh, in that there are uh, quite important national standards and partnerships that need to be brought into play for building a, a data infrastructure but acknowledging all of that that's the activity of the project that we create uh, a new data infrastructure the next step is the output step so that is that there is something new and shiny that you can that can be used um, our program is really very progressive as far as infrastructure is concerned, and it's based on this um, premise that data itself can be and is an infrastructure if it's designed, if it's, if it's done properly, it can be an infrastructure in the sense that it can be an asset and it can support uh, research into the future, multiple different types of un unknown research into the future. Um, so we're really talking, you know, in our program, we're talking about building up those assets um, and at the end, by the end of the projects, you'll have a new uh, or reinvigorated uh, data asset that can be used for research. Um, the outcome stage then is, okay, uh, it's an asset. It can support leading edge research. Let's. Uh, see that happening, that's the outcome stage, that the data infrastructure is actually used by researchers or by industry and, and scientists in industry and government uh, around Australia. So that's the, when we're talking about the logic of the program after the establishment and the almost the finishing of the establishment phase contracts, uh, that the next, the outcome that we're all doing it, the, the reason we're all doing it is so that we can um, support research. And then the impact from our point of view is that uh, from that research, uh, really um, impactful activity happens even beyond research, that you know the research is used uh, to change policy or to improve policy or to improve economic activity or uh, to make positive changes to the environment. So that's our overall program logic for the um, program. And as you'll see, the outcomes and impacts are uh, you know, two thirds of what we're doing. And that's why it's a really important um, part of the, the whole uh, program logic. Uh, the astute amongst you will have noted that you know, those really important parts uh, can be sometimes 10 years in, in, in the making. And they happen well after the sort of um, contracted build stage of an infrastructure. Um, but they are important because that's the whole reason we're doing it. You know, research infrastructure is there for the benefit. You know, the, the whole idea of everything is to realize a benefit. You know, that's why we're doing this, to, to do good. Um, and the research infrastructure is there to benefit research and uh, the research is there to benefit society. Um, in program management speak, you've got this benefit realization uh, concept where you build something like a hotel, uh, but it's not really, you haven't realized the benefits just by building the hotel. You have to uh, fill it with people. You, they have to have a good time. The company has to get money in, uh, in response. So all those things are the benefits of having built a hotel. And um, we hear that there are Things in the places in the world where there are big cities that are being built, but the benefits have not been realized from those. So that's not what we're looking for here. So that, that's another term that you'll hear in program management is this benefits realization. And it's, and it's about actually making sure that the outcomes and impacts actually happen. And if you're not convinced by all of that, well, we just have to do it anyway because uh, increase requires us to report what you know, those outcomes and impacts are, and so we have to ask you that. Uh, the Australian government is doing it across the whole research sector. There's, the ARC has 
formal assessment programs for finding out what kind of research happens in Australia. That's ERA. And then they've got they've just introduced a new uh, program, the engagement and impact assessment that's already done around in Australia. So if you belong to a university or a, a, a research organization in Australia, your organization is already being asked these questions by the ARC and um, that you've been they've been providing um, uh, research outcomes and uh, impact um, narratives to the ARC already. This is part of a broader Australian government policy on the place of universities in our society and their, um, how they are meant to contribute to broader impact. Um, and if that's not enough, the, the, the report in blue there that happened in 2015 actually changed the way that funding happens in Australia to uh, really say that um, just doing it uh, a journal publication is not the way that you get money within the Australian research system anymore. It's still there, but uh, it's also on your um, engagement with uh, society, with industry, with um, public policy. Uh, so that's already happened and those changes are percolating through our, um, our research sector right at the moment, the change in money levers. <laughs> and then on the right there, <clears throat> that's something that's happening right now. In April, the Australian government put out a consultation on university research commercialization that included translation and then um, commercialization and in general, the relationship with uh, Australian industry. They're thinking about a whole new scheme that some people have called you know, a new MRFF that would uh, provide specific funding for research translation and research um, business um, collaboration. Uh, and the MRFF at the moment is just as big as the whole NHMRC and ARC budgets combined. So um, this, if it goes in that direction, there'll be a whole new funding scheme that really focuses in on this kind of research translation and uh, the impacts of research. Um, so we have to do it and it's good in any, in any case. Uh, so what do you, how do you do it? Well, um, we've had the ARDC has had, uh, multiple sessions with the CSIRO that has a very good uh, impact and evaluation, um, sort of program. Uh, we've also had all our program managers sort of trained through different, um, program logic, uh, things, and we've tried to, um, reflect that what good practice in this area is in our program guidelines. Uh, on the right there, we even did a, a big investigation. Um, it's been over three years uh, looking at what is the pathway to impact the data and data infrastructure. You know, what, what role does data and data infrastructure play on the pathway to impact? Um, and if you're interested, there's a quite a nice report that was done by Professor Mark Reed and Dr. Eric Jensen um, on analyzing that. And actually what they did was look at all those, um, um, what they call impact narratives that your universities uh, provided to the ARC and the ones that were provided in the UK. And they did a, a, a qualitative analysis of those uh, impact narratives and identified a, a very considerable number that relied on data was the first thing. And then they also saw, saw that actually the kinds of impacts that were being reported for the, in those ones that relied on data and data infrastructure, there was no other way to achieve that impact other than through this uh, collaboration around data. Uh, so we try to reflect the learnings back program. measure what you care about and so then we'll be talking about then how can we start to monitor and, and report on those things. Adrian, we um, just lost you for a couple of so minutes. Could you 
Adrian, you might have to kill your video. I ask him if he can just go back a sort of yeah a minute or so. Lost him all together. Yeah, I'll just wait to see if you can come back in. Mr. Peter. Adrian, can you hear us? Okay, we'll just wait a minute and see if we can get back in. Might be worth messaging Adrian, folks, just in the chat. Yeah, I'm doing that now. Yeah. Yep. Probably still talking away. It's not outside of legal parameters. There's <laughs> Adrian, things. Adrian, yeah. can you hear us? Yes. We've lost, we lost you for about three minutes or more. Oh, can you hear me now? We lost, we can hear you now, but we lost your old video and voice for quite some time. Just maybe go back to um, the last slide when you talked about the IMI report was about the last time we had you. Yeah, we, the end of that sort of conversation and anything from there on we lost. So if you're happy, just to go back to that one. Yeah. Um, just, yeah. And we yeah, couldn't tell you so it. because we uh, we didn't. Could um, perhaps turn your video off just for a little while and see how see if that helps. Uh, except that less than I'm not sure how to do that whilst hearing. Down the bottom. Hmm. Okay. Um, let me continue there. If uh, I've got my phone here, Natasha, if anything happens, just give me a call. Um, Thanks. So we, we, uh, I'm not sure what I said about the uh, the project on the right there, the investigating the link between research data and impact. It was looking at the uh, impact narratives that were recorded by all the Australian universities in that ARC evaluation pro uh, program. And uh, it looked at the UK ones as well, and then it's identified these really important pathways that data and data infrastructure provide uh, on the pathway to uh, having an impact. Um, I recommend you have a, a look at that as well. In any case, all of these things have now been, you know, the good practice that was suggested in all of those kind of studies uh, uh, are now reflected in our program and they're summed up uh, on the dot points on the left there that uh, it's important to plan for outcomes and impact early. Um, it's important to include the end users and benefit realization actually in the project itself. And if you care about these things, then you have to weigh, have a way of measuring them. Um, so that's what our uh, the activities look like uh, within the, the program. We've asked you all to include research users and beneficiaries in your project, so that should be uh, already in play um, uh, to have some kind of relationship with translation partners and to have an explicit plan. I think we're um, we've got that uh, you're in that planning phase now, but it will be uh, an explicit part of the uh, project plan. Uh, the implementing and monitoring st stage that will set up. The ability to monitor usage of the infrastructure and um, broader impacts at a later stage. Uh, and we're very keen at, uh, as part of this um, to work with you all on building the community awareness of your infrastructure, uh, building community buy in so that we know that the research uh, community will be ready to go as soon as we open the curtains. Um, and then there's a reporting phase, uh, as we noted there, that's well after the, you know, the establishment project phase, uh, and we apologize that that sort of means that there's kind of a reporting phase that's uh, a year and two years after the project finishes. Um, but there's no other way to, to measure that stuff because you just have to give it time to, to happen. And in fact, actually, you probably need 10 years to do that properly, and we may well look at ways of keeping in touch for uh, longer. Um, there is a spectrum of capability in this area. You know, the first thing is that, you know, possibly uh, a level zero is that we don't know how researchers are using the infrastructure. It's not, it's unmanaged and it's unknown. We'd like at least to get to that for the second dot point that at least the usage of the infrastructure by researchers is known. 
and monitored uh, the second two dot points are aspirational. We'll try to do as much as we can in those areas or as much as it is possible um, and um, work on those. So that's the fact that, okay, you know that researchers have used your infrastructure, but um, what publications did they do or what, you know, what programs were they involved in? Um, it's harder to know, but we'll, we'll at least try to do some stuff in that area. And then the, the broader impacts that were achieved by those research by those researchers are again a step away. But um, if we don't uh, set off in that direction and have it as a as a goal, we'll never measure it, and um, we will uh, um, whatever improvements we can make to those last two dot points will be you know for the betterment of everyone. These, I'll just skip over these. These were, you, you must be aware of these. They're already in your um, sort of program guidelines, etc. Uh, we've got, you've already put in applications where, you, we've, where we all talked about what the impacts and what kind of research would be done with it. You're right now in the middle of doing your project plans that, that have uh, a specific plan for research outcomes and broader impact. Um, and then after the projects, we, we've got that 12 to 24 months thing. That's the, the nub of it. There's nothing more specific than that. Uh, we want to work with you to get the most we can out of all of these, uh, those things, but they're, they're, that's the bare bones of the requirements there. And if you've opted in for that 5% extra, that's to create some work packages to uh, make some changes in the systems that would that allow, would allow you to track and monitor those kind of things. Uh, and if you're doing that, then these are the kinds of things that are in scope there. Um, identifiers that might allow you to scope the chain to track the usage. Um, there's a whole set of things there. They're already in your thing. I'm happy to discuss some of those um, as part of the discussion. I think that's all, uh, except to say that uh, through this guideline and the policy and, and how it's instantiated in the program, we're just setting a strategic flag that says, this is what we would like to be able to do with you. We'd like to help you um, monitor and track the, the research usage and the broader outcomes you know, for your own benefits. And we want to do it for our, uh, our increased program benefits. Uh, it's a great thing to be able to work with you on. We don't have all the answers yet. It's not quite so sure what best practice is in all these areas. We're not even quite so sure what you would think a good reporting requirement might be for those 12 and 24 month reports. We're happy to work on those with you. So we envisage setting up a working uh, a working group that would sort of have, be a co-design and community practice for sharing uh, amongst the projects and, and doing the best possible things we can in this area. I think that was all from me. I apologize if uh, the middle part of it was a mystery and I hope we didn't lose too many people with probably my daughter watching some kind of video on the internet. Okay, thanks very much, Adrian. Um, we have about five minutes more of Adrian's time um, before he has to go. Um, and then I've just been reminded that Adele Coot, who's our marketing and communications manager, will give a short very brief talk on acknowledging the ARDC and the way that you can do that in your projects. Um, so are there, are there any questions? I can't see any in the chat currently and I cannot see everybody on screen. So if you have one, please, oh, that's a bit better. Uh, now I can see people. Um, would anyone like to ask a question or okay. make a comment or raise any concerns or, or anything in regard to what they've heard? I'll just make a quick comment, Go ahead, Adrian. Yes. That's that's really good. I'm glad that you're putting together this activity. You know that we can sort of track. It's a very difficult area, as we all know. Um, so uh, you know, just looking forward to seeing what we can all bring bring to this and work out what best practice is around it. So it's all good. Good, thanks, Ben. That's, um, we're hoping. Look, we're doing because it it's aligned with the whole increased program and with the system needs to be. And, Okay, Adrian, I don't know if we've lost you yet. Um, there was a question from Daniel and then Steve, I think. Daniel, do you want to go first? 
Yes, yes. thank you. Thank you, Adrian and everyone. Um, so my question was about researchers accessing data products, and I saw in some of the associated material that came about tracking usage that ideally we would have researchers registering to access the data. Our tendency would be to make some of our data products open source available without registration. And I was just wondering whether this requirement to register to use the data was essential or whether you're happy to have data products being entirely open. It's a very good question, Daniel. And, and look, I have been working with projects to make the data totally open for years. Uh, and um, however, we also have this requirement to keep in a track of you know how how the infrastructure is being used. So uh, that's the that's why we've left this open as a kind of uh, an objective, and we'd happy to work with each of the projects to see how, how the best way of doing that is. Um, we would probably say that, that then that we might have to compromise on, on a little bit on both of those. You may not be able to, you know, get a very specific registration for every user, but we may not be able to, in, you know, if this impact and outcome is part of what societal expectation is uh, on us, then we may not be able to just have the click here and, and have the data in your box. I have seen some pretty good examples of uh, infrastructure that has a very lightweight sort of Oh, by the way, if you're using our data, what are you using it for? And what, how, 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 can you give us a contact? Um, so that's hopefully what we might be able to do through that working group is try and um, share some of those, uh, the ways of doing this. So it's because what we really have here is an objective, everyone's on board. Now, what are the right ways of doing that so that it doesn't disrupt our activity and, and cause expense and delay and all of that? How can we get this in, in some really efficient ways? Yes, so thanks for that. And I understand the desire to to find out who's using the data and how. Can I just make one further comment about it? Yeah, sure, go ahead. Yeah, so I mean, I'm I'm quite passionate about reproducible research, and I appreciate that in a lot of areas, in say medical research, this isn't possible because the data simply can't be shared. But there's also a societal push to make re research reproducible wherever possible. So, for example, I tend to make the code and analyzing data for generating all the figures and things like that available where I can. And so if we go down this path of requiring registration to access data, it actually sort of makes that whole process a lot harder. And so I just note that as a conflicting societal demand that's also being pushed and I would say goes against the one to, to track access to data. Yes, and I see we've got some comments here about um, API access that's very difficult to to manage as well. But sometimes you can. You know. Anyway, I agree. There are two uh, objectives here that are both being given to us that they can't. Neither of them can be at zero. Um, and I think the art of what we're going to try and do here is to find the ways of doing this that are both acceptable and practical and don't compromise on the open science agenda. Yeah, sounds great. Um, Adrian, we have a couple more people who would like to ask question and we're on the half hour. Should we um, capture those questions and um, get get them to you via email to then share with your answer with everyone? And how would you like to do the um, invitation to join the working group? Would we send that via the email as well and look for volunteers? I think so. I'm happy to work, you know, work with you and the program managers as to the best way of getting that kind of a working group up and running. Um, if there's a Yes, and uh, if there's further questions, look, this is this, we could be discussing this, and that's the idea of setting up the working group is to actually discuss how to do this. And um, so I, I'm happy to take a few questions if there's a minute or two, but then I will have to go. And then, um, okay, great, then. thank you. Um, Steve had the first question then, and then Martin. Uh, yeah, I'll. Can I make a quick comment on the, the previous comment? Um, the, uh, the reproducibility and the accessibility questions are not necessarily in conflict. There are ways of doing this that you can deal with. So I think that's a good thing for the, the, the working group to discuss. That wasn't, that wasn't my question. So, so I'm a social science medical research 
you know, we, we've been working on how to how to deal with the exact conflict you're talking about. So be good to talk about that. Um, my question is applying this to the platforms projects. Are you looking at extending this out from the beyond the data projects? Uh, what it was is that um, in spirit, yes, the ARDC has a has a um, you know, a commitment to, to impact and um, outcomes. Um, facilitation. Um, we just we've only made a specific sort of guideline, and because I well just priorities, we thought this was, was very very important for this program. Um, so it's not formally extended to the platforms program. They don't have the same kind of guideline that we have, and they, were, they, they didn't set up the in the same way. However, it's one organisation, and you know it's the ARDC that's committed to uh, facilitating outcomes and impacts. So. Um, in spirit, yes, but in form, in absolute precise form, no. And we do have a number of platforms that are actually, you know, aligned with pro with Dash of Data Assets projects as well. So. Okay, great. Um, Martin, over to you. Sorry, um, from experience, it's been getting easier to acknowledge funding from the ARC or NHMRC when publishing paper or depositing data in a database or Zenoda. I mean, it might be easier if um, NCRIS could be recognised in the same way as uh, the ARC and NHMRC, and that there could just be a pull down menu making it much easier to acknowledge that uh, you're being supported. Just wondering if there's any uh, any kind of thing we can do to to help that along. Yes, uh, there's a lot of activity, and this this is not in the five minute time. We can't cover all of that. There's a lot of activity happening in the background around what does it mean to keep an uh, how to track inputs into research and um, um, funders, all sorts of things. Um, a lot of it relies on global information systems to, to do with publishers and grant applications, etc. Um, and they are using increasingly identifiers for all of those things. So there's an identifier for the funder and there's an identifier for the publication and for the sample and for the data set. So that's part of why we would be encouraging that. Um, and yes, it'd be great to have identifiers for the instruments or for the facilities or for NCRIS as a program. Um, and we are, we are introducing that thinking in and, and all that does, it helps you to leverage those global information systems that are harvesting some of those things. Um, and then specifically, we should talk about in this working group, you now some work that's happening with Crossref and the publishers about capturing references to data sets in publications. There's been some really quite fundamental work done over the last three or four years. And I think our program has a way of uh, interfacing with that. And we have a very strong relationship with, uh, with that program. So I think we'd almost be able to do a test case with these projects. Great, thank you. Um, there's a comment there from Steve. If you want to read it around reproducible research and restricted data, just referencing Ivan Hannigan's work on that. Um, I think that's all the questions I have, unless you wanted to add more on the API question that was asked, or is that something we'll unpack more in the working group? Tracking Does tracking and monitoring data uh, accessed using APIs include monitoring data access using APIs. Look, some of our facilities would, almost all of their data access would happen through APIs, so we have to at least look at it and see how, you know, what can be done in those areas. Okay, great. Thanks for the question, Marco. Okay, so um, we will leave it there with Adrian and we will hand over to Adele to talk about acknowledgement guidelines. Um, and uh, thanks, Adrian. And I will follow up with um, the next steps for the working group. I know there's a lot of work to that people are doing on this to be shared because we all have very similar challenges of how to demonstrate 
you know, the impact of the investment that we're making. So I think it will be beneficial, you know, not just to the ARDC, but to all the partners um, involved in our co-investment projects. Um, and I know there's some really good thinking going on in the cadre project around that too. So hoping Steve will be able to share that with us through the working group um, as well. So.